Are you ready to be shocked? The awful hygiene of medieval royals will leave you astonished. Did you know that Henry IV had such bad breath that his first wife was not pleased with his filthiness and insatiable appetite for raw garlic? And that brushing teeth was rare in medieval Europe, resulting in bad breath due to the consumption of alcohol and raw food. Watch until the end to find out more about the terrible hygiene practices of medieval royals and how far we have come in maintaining cleanliness in the 21st century. Henry's first wife, Margaret d'Avalois, was not pleased with his filthiness or his insatiable appetite for raw garlic. In medieval Europe, brushing one's teeth was also a rare occurrence, and people frequently had bad breath issues because they consumed a lot of alcohol and mainly raw foods. Human waste was dumped into castle moats. A moat is a dream come true for anyone who likes to daydream about living in a medieval castle. This lake or river provided the fortress with additional protection. However, the water was actually vile, contaminated by the waste of those who lived in the castle. Through a drain on the ground floor called the Guardope, the castle's sewage system discharged into the moat. What was the real impetus behind people using canopies as beds? Don't you just adore how historical dramas are set? Every piece of furniture in a royal mansion looks like it belongs in a fairy tale, including the elegant four-poster beds with canopies. Those roof coverings weren't there for show. We're sorry to ruin that lovely aesthetic feature for you. The roofs of medieval homes frequently leaked, letting in pests, beetles, and droppings that would fall onto the beds below. The original purpose of canopies was to prevent unwelcome debris from soiling freshly made bed linens. Did you use lamb's wool as toilet paper? Before modern toilet paper became commercially available in the middle of the 19th century, people had to come up with inventive ways to clean themselves. Since most people live in poverty, if we ignore the eras prior to medieval Europe, when people weren't afraid to get their hands dirty, we might arrive at that period quickly. They were forced to improvise using whatever supplies they could find, like moss or leaves. The aristocracy wouldn't accept any rolls from a forest of chance. Lamb's wool or delicate towels were only used to wipe the bottoms of the king's servants. Did the royals hire slaves to clean their stools? Because it is so filthy, using the restroom was already mentioned earlier. Royalty was expected to empty chamber pots, also referred to as the groom of the stool. The closed stool, a plush velvet box used for such occasions, was where the king or queen would sit if they needed to use the restroom. When they were finished and ready to have the waste removed, their servant would be useful. Despite the fact that it frequently required contact with the king's waist, this was one of the most sought after positions for a servant. Many grooms of the stool became close friends with their stoolmates because they needed someone to talk to. Each morning, the job involved sitting with the king while he defecated. In some ways, it was similar to being a therapist. These gentlemen had their portraits painted and were even addressed as sir. How about the bath phobia of the European continent? According to legend, the Crusaders brought Turkish baths back to Europe because they were so enamored with the idea of them. In Turkey, daily life included extensive use of public Turkish baths. Medieval Europeans had some strange beliefs. Because infectious diseases like the plague were so common during the 14th through the 18th centuries, everyone from royalty to commoners avoided getting wet. As a result, they stayed away from using water and instead relied on easily replaceable linens. Do people still worry about drowning in the 21st century? As one might anticipate, the absence of central heating during the bitterly cold winters in the West made even taking a bath a major hassle, if not downright terrifying. Many people were afraid they would get sick with the cold weather and die. Children from affluent, aristocratic families were frequently seen yelling in terror as they received their first baths. According to author Catherine Ostenberg, before the Civil War, Americans were just as filthy as their European counterparts. 
Nevertheless, the Union's accomplishment in eradicating disease through hygienic campaigns persuaded its populace that maintaining cleanliness was both progressive and patriotic. In the 19th century, when did the first full immersion baths of the modern era debut in Europe? It seemed like too much trouble to fill the tub with water, prepare a hot bath, and then drain it. Rarely, however, did in guests ask for the luxury of a hot bath each day. Most people used still existing basins and pitchers with water to take what we now refer to as sponge baths. Handheld fans called homenders were carried around to ward off bad odors and also served as decoration. Hair drying in the Middle Ages? Since at least the Middle Ages, women have dyed their gray hair to hide it. Women who were balding were assisted with various tonics. Using the bark or leaves of fruit trees, one could dye a woman's hair brown. On the other hand, blonde or yellow hair was thought to be more attractive. Women kept a mixture of honey and white on their heads all night. The mixture also contained celandine roots, olive oil, cumin seed oil, box shavings, and saffron. The woman needed to let this sit in their hair for a day before washing it out. When she did, the person's hair would be noticeably lighter and have one of the most popular hairstyles, golden blonde, just like it is today. It would be fascinating to find out how well this medieval recipe colored hair. When was body hair considered unattractive for women and advised to be removed? Women have faced similar pressure as they do now to completely shave their bodies. In addition to using dried cat feces to clean the skin and remove hair, women use tweezers as plucks. According to the following excerpt from the 11th century book, Day or Night to Malarium, one could try rubbing the affected area with vinegar, ant eggs, red or mint, and ivy gum to get rid of hair permanently. The woman's apparent lack of self-awareness infuriated the church's clergy, who declared that shaving and waxing to attract men was immoral. However, women at the time were typically depicted as holy, barefoot, and hairless, even in the pubic and genital regions. Women's pubic hair is mentioned in historical tales like those in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, indicating that it must have been a luxury item reserved for a small number of women. In conclusion, the hygiene practices of medieval royals were shockingly terrible by today's standards. They had bad breaths due to the consumption of alcohol and raw foods, and used canopies to prevent pests, beetles, and droppings from falling onto their beds. Before modern toilet paper, lamb's wool and delicate towels were used to wipe the bottoms of the king's servants, while grooms of the stool had the task of emptying chamber pots. Due to the fear of infectious diseases, Europeans avoided getting wet and instead relied on easily replaceable linens. In the 21st century, maintaining cleanliness is considered both progressive and patriotic, and hygienic campaigns have helped eradicate diseases. Although hair dye and tonics were available to women in the Middle Ages, hair drying was not a common practice. Overall, the terrible hygiene practices of medieval royals serve as a reminder of how far we have come in maintaining cleanliness and hygiene in modern times. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this video about the awful hygiene of medieval royals both shocking and informative. It's always fascinating to learn about how people lived in the past, especially when it comes to their personal habits and hygiene practices. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel for more fascinating and surprising happenings in our history. See you in our next video.